Now let us look at the third <coughs> question. Um, this question is uh, uh, the inverse demand curve which we have uh, solved earlier uh, and uh, you can see in this case Uh, if we look at this question, the inverse demand curve for a fossil fuel is given as P t is 5 minus 0 0.6 Q t. Assume that the costs of extraction are 0, initial reserves R 0 is 50 and d, uh, d is 10 percent. What is the price elasticity of the demand for this function when Q t is equal to 4? So, this is straightforward. Q t is equal to 4, we can find out what is P t, P t is 5 minus 0 0.6 into 4 is 2.6 and d P by d Q is minus 0 0.6. So, the elasticity is d Q by Q by d P by P. P by Q <coughs> you can just substitute the values this is going to be 2.6 Q is T is 4 and this is minus 0.6. So, it is minus 2.6 by 2.4 minus 1.083 percent. Uh, negative is uh, obvious because if the price increases, the quantity would decrease. Uh, of course, if you are looking at the mag absolute value, it will be 1.08. So, this is the first part of the equation, the price uh, elasticity of the demand A. Uh, then determine the time path of extraction for a mining industry under pure competition. Uh, so, um, we can we have derived this in the module. So, at P t is equal to A, Q t is equal to 0. So, P t is equal to 5 is P 0 1 plus d raised to t 1.1 raised to t, where t is the time when the reserve gets exhausted. So, that means P 0 will be 5 by 1.1 raised to t, P t is 5 into 1.1 t minus t that is p t. So, q t will be a minus b p t. So, q t will be 5 minus 0 0.6 into the q uh, sorry the q q t P t is 5 minus 0.6 Q t. So, um, uh, 5 into 1.1 raised to t minus t is 5 minus 0.6 Q t. So, Q t is 5 by 0.6 minus 5 by 0 0.6 1.1 raised to t minus t. Now, only thing we need to determine is the value of capital T and that is there in the next question, when does the resource get exhausted? Once we do that, we can actually solve for this. Uh, we had derived based on the uh, geometric progression that we had, we had derived this expression T is equal to B R 0 by A by 1 plus D 1 minus 1 plus T raised to T. So, what we will get is T is equal to 0 0.6 into 50 by 5 plus 1 by 0 0.1 into 1 minus 1.1 1 .1 raised to t 6 
plus 10 1 minus 1.1 raised to t. So, you can do this iteratively start with a value of t then calculate it get the next value until it gets converged and you will get t approximately equal to 13.1 year. So, when you substitute this what we will get is q t q t is 8.33 into 1 minus 1.1 t minus 30. And if you look at that I have just plotted it for you. You can see that it starts extraction part starts from here and it closes down at about the 13th year and the total area uh, total sum of all of this is 50 million tons R0. The next question is uh, would the time path of extraction of a monopolistic mining industry be different? The answer is obviously yes and we have seen the reason for this. Um, the here the since it is a monopolistic mining industry if it controls the quantity the, the price will get changed. So, if it releases less amount it will have a higher price. So, that means that it would it would try to maximize its revenue. So, that we have the total marginal revenue in different intervals increasing by the discount rate and as a result of it qualitatively what would happen is that if you look at the this is the competition q t versus time competitive market and if we had a monopoly this is you would it would go for a larger amount of time. Um, so, essentially what happens is that um, because it has an incentive uh, to this is a monopolistic case monopoly. So, qualitatively the time taken would be uh, more uh, the time actually comes out to be 2 b r 0 by a as compared to the earlier case. Well, here we are, we are not asking for this to be we have not asked for this to be calculated you could calculate it and see that you would get instead of 13 years you would get something like 20, uh, 20 years uh, it would last. And so that uh, the uh, idea is that uh, because it has an incentive it can get a higher price initially by less uh, by releasing less into the market the overall revenue that it gets is more and so the monopoly actually uh, tries to optim uh, increase its total returns and in the process of course, the utility of the consumers is affected. Uh, <coughs> what is the effect of a higher discount rate on the path of extraction? Well, if you have a higher discount rate, uh, if you look at it what would happen is that the Mm, price would increase at the discount rate and we would try to if you the discount rates are higher we would try to uh, extract more uh, initially as compared to in the future. And uh, so, that that is what would happen you would have and uh, if the if we had a higher discount rate this would last less. So, this is d 1 d 2 So, with this we uh, this is very sim uh, this is exactly what we had covered in the co um, portion where we were looking at uh, non renewable resource economics. Let us move ahead to the next question. And this uh, question, uh, this is question number, uh, the question numbering is, this is 3F. 
A holiday resort is located in a remote area and uh, is a popular tourist destination. Industry sets up a coal-based power plant adjacent to it, this. Holiday resort files a case in court to acquire property rights for having clean air, specified air quality to restrain the power plant from polluting the air and affecting its business. If there are no transaction costs and there is complete information from an economic viewpoint, comment on the possible impact of the court judgment, viz whether the plant, power plant wins the case, gets the right to continue polluting the air, or the resort wins the case, acquires property rights to a clean atmosphere, similar to the point when the coal plant um, power plant did not exist. Assume that the power plant meets the pollution norms, clearly explain your answer. So in this case, this is the classic Coast theorem, there are two options. One is the power plant you know, obtains the right that it is meeting the uh, polluting, um, it is meeting the uh, norms um, uh, of the environmental norms and it can continue to pollute. Mm, uh, uh, even uh, so, in this, in such a case, what would happen according to this is that if the tourist destination, uh, the holiday resort has a loss in terms of the um, uh, foregone revenue uh, and uh, if uh, there is a certain cost in terms of cleaning up the pollution of the power plant and the cost of the total lost revenue uh, is more than the cost of that, the holiday resort could actually pay the power plant uh, to make the uh, to make the uh, controls pollution controls and have a cleaner atmosphere uh, so that that would be the kind of thing but in case the power power plant wins the case, in case the holiday resort wins the case and the power plant has a loss because it has to shut down then the power plant can compensate the holiday resort for the loss and continue to um, uh, generate its electricity. So it will depend on what is the loss, is, which is whichever economically, whichever is more based on that, the, uh, uh, the calculation of who is winning the case will not affect the economic, uh, economic judgment and will not affect the viability, the final solution will be uh, from an economic viewpoint if there are no transaction costs is independent of the judgment which is happening. Because if we look at uh, the same uh, industry owning the holiday resort and the power plant, an optimal solution will be that which will give you the maximum uh, benefit. Of course, from an equity point of view, there may be different issues, but this is the classic case of the course theorem. If there are no transaction costs, uh, the uh, property rights, whoever owns the property rights, the economic decision would be the same, uh, whether the property rights are owned by the holiday resort or by the power plant. So this is a, is a revision of the course theorem. Uh, Let us look at the fourth question. The fourth question is, a developer has bid for a wind farm of uh, 250 megawatts and a tariff of rupees uh, 2.8 kilowatt hour for a period of 25 years. Capital cost is uh, 1,400 crores. If the ONM cost is 0.2 rupees per kilowatt hour and the annual capacity factor is 30 percent, determine the internal rate of return on the investment, show a few steps and obtain an approximate answer. Developer is being offered a loan of 700 crores with an interest rate of 10 percent and a tenor term of 10 years. Calculate the annual loan repayment amount, determine the rate of return on the equity, show the cash flows, form the equation for the IRR and show how you would calculate should the developer opt for the loan. So if you look at this, this is very similar to the question that we had solved in the class. So if we look at uh, this, the 250 megawatts annual capacity factor is 30 percent. So 250 megawatts into 0.3 into 8760 is the total amount of generation in megawatt hours. 
and uh, if the ONM cost is uh, so, so this is uh, mm, 250 into 0 0.3 into 8760. If we just calculate this, it is going to be. This is uh, 657,000 megawatt hour. And uh, if the ONM cost is 0 0.2 rupees per kilowatt hour, then the uh, ONM cost is going to be 0 0.2 into 10 raised to 3 into 657,000. rupees. Um, then uh, when we look at the uh, calculate, uh, so the developer is being show a few steps. Uh, so we, we have asked determine the internal rate of return on. So if the entire payment is being made by the developer, then it is going to be minus 1400 crores is the, this is the payment, C0 is 1400 and annually we are getting 2.8 rupees into 657,000 into 10 raised to 3. This is rupees. If you are dividing it by, if you want to get it in crores, this will be divided by 10 raised to 7. So, this is the amount that we will get. And uh, if we look at this, 10 raised to 3, 6, 10, 2.8 into 657. 2.8 into 657 divided by 10. We get this as 183.96 crores. <coughs> we are also, we uh, actually will be paying an ONM cost of 0.2. So instead of this, we can take this as uh, 2.8 multiply it by 2.6 is what we are going to get. So, we are going to get 170.8 crores each year. So, this is 170.8 and uh, the IRR that we will get will be, we will set the net present value 1400 plus 170.8 1 plus r raised to k and this is for 25 years set this is equal to 0 and then we can solve this for the IRR. So, in a similar way we can uh, we can get the value of internal rate of return for the loan of 700 crores with an interest rate of 10 percent and a tenor term of 10 years we will just get the annual loan repayment is going to be i 1 plus i raised to n l 1 plus i raised to n l minus 1 interest rate is 0.1 1.1 raised to 10 so we can uh, you can calculate this and then the uh, this will be multiplied by 700 to get the annual uh, loan repayment so, in the case of, um, in this case, the value is going to become, instead of 1400, we will get 
now we are only paying 700 crores and here we are going to get back 170.8 and instead and we are paying out the annual loan repayment. So this is very similar to the problem that we have solved in the uh, module when we did this. Uh, I will upload for you the Excel sheet which gives you the complete solution and you can, uh, you can cross check your numbers with this. Let us go to the last question and this is a simple input output calculation that we had done. So the transactions in a state economy using electricity and industry, so there are two sectors, there is an electricity sector and uh, there is a, uh, an industry sector. Um, so if we look at it, the electricity to electricity is 800 million rupees, electricity to in industry is 900 million rupees and the final demand is 1500 million rupees, industry to in electricity is 1000 and industry to industry is 1200, the final demand for the industry is 3000. So if there is a society with this um, two sector economy, we want to calculate the total sectoral outputs and the direct technical coefficients that is the A matrix. So let us start by writing down the sectors as E and I, E, I, and the final demand and then total, total output and here we can have another payment sector and then we have the total output. So here we have given that this is 800, this is all in million rupees, this is 900 and this is 1500, right. So we can add this up and we get 1700 plus 1500, this is 3200. This is given to you us as 800 plus 1000. Now this total must add up to 3200, so 1800, 3200 minus 1800 will be 1400. In this case, this is 1000, 1200, 3000, that means 4200, 5200, we add this up and we get. 5200 and this comes to 5200, so this is um, 2100 and this is 3100. Now this uh, remaining <coughs> final demand for the payment sector, this value should be given to you if you want to complete the table. Let's take, uh, let us say that this was given as 1500. Then when we add this up, this is uh, 1500 plus 1200, 6000 is this total. So this total comes out to be 14400. Fourteen thousand four hundred. 
Now, the question which has been asked is the total sectoral outputs. Total sectoral outputs of E is 3,200 million tons. This is the first answer and for the industry is 5,200 million tons. Uh, then let us calculate the A matrix. So, when we talk about the A matrix, we are going to just divide A matrix is going to be electricity this is the um, mm, this is the destination sector per unit of electricity output that means 800 by 3200 and this is going to be 900 by 5,200, 1,000 divided by 3,200 and this is 1,200 divided by 5,200. So, these values the A matrix turns out to be 0.25 point one seven three one seven three one point three one two five point two three zero eight. What do A one two A one two and A two two signify? So, A12 is the amount of electricity used per unit of industrial output. That means, rupees per rupee of industrial value add, electricity in uh, intensity of the, uh, in, uh, of the industrial sector. And uh, the A22 is the industrial uh, output which is being used for the industrial sector itself and that is the amount of industrial output which is used in this. So, that, that is what it means. Let us look at the next question is to compute the Leontief inverse matrix L. So, that is we can do I minus A and you will find that this is 0 0.75 minus 0.17. 31 minus 0 0.3125 and I L is I minus A inverse. You can just use the formula which we had done and then you will get this as 1.471.331 0.598. You can see the diagonal elements are greater than 1. So, now the question which is asked is if the final demand increases by 5 percent, final demand for electricity remain the same, compute the changes in the total output of both the sectors. So, if the final demand for um, industry increases by 5 percent, the final demand was 1000 500 uh, and uh, the uh, final demand for industry increases by 5 percent and the uh, final demand for uh, this is the this is the final demand for the electricity sector 1500 remains unchanged. So, the initial thing was 1500 and 3000. This will now change to final demand will now change to 1500 and 5 percent 1 1.05 of 3000 will become 3150. Right, 10 percent is 300. So, this is so if this is the case, now we want to find out 
uh, what is the, what will be the uh, change in the uh, overall. So, what we can uh, do is that we had already calculated the Leontief uh, inverse and if we now multiply the Leontief inverse <coughs> with the final demands, we can then get what will be the um, values for, uh, we can uh, multiply this 1.471.5 331.598 1 1.434 into 1500 so that we can get what will be the values of x and uh, once you do this then we can uh, you can see that the final table that we will get will be of this you will have electricity industry you get this and then we can multiply the totals we can get the totals and multiply them and uh, we'll 9.37.2.1.5.0.3.1.5.0. You can cross check this answer. You get the values of x and then once we get the values of x, we can multiply by the A matrix to get these coefficients and then uh, we can get the uh, values which is there. Uh, so, the changes in total output are calculated in this form 3249.7 and 5415.2, uh, that is the value which is there. Uh, then the question which is asked is if the average price of electricity is 4 rupees per kilowatt hour, what is the electricity intensity in industry? Let us take the original uh, table that we had. Uh, the original table we got A value as the industry uh, electricity intensity in industry that means the amount of electricity used uh, in industry per unit. This was 900 we had the value of nine hundred million rupees of electricity for a total output of industry of five thousand two hundred million rupees. Industrial output. So, if we take 900 and divide by 4, that is the price of electricity rupees per kilowatt hour, we get this as 2825 um, uh, 20, million kilowatt hour <coughs> or this will be 225 into 10 raised to 3 megawatt hour. So, the intensity will be 225 into 10 raised to 3 megawatt hour divided by 5200 million rupees. So, this is megawatt hour per million rupees. Thousand can be cancelled with ten two thousand two fifty by uh, fifty two is the answer that we are going to get two two five zero one 
it comes to 43.3 and then what are the limitations with the main limitation is the fact that uh, the relationships are linear and the coefficients are static. Uh, as things change over a long period of time, these coefficients would also change and so that is the main limitation. Um, the last question that we have is what is net energy analysis? Net energy analysis uh, essentially looks at uh, different choices from an energy uh, viewpoint. So, we try to see what is the total amount of energy required in creating a product including all the materials and the energy required for that. When we talk about net energy required for the biofuel, we have to start with the um, start from the agriculture, uh, write down all the steps in creation of the bio biofuel, uh, right from the farm to the process where you have the biofuel uh, esterification and others and then to the use. And we write down the entire chain, if you look at your notes with it, that figure is available and in each case uh, depending on the yield, we would calculate how much energy per unit of fuel and then make that comparison. So, with this we complete the solution of this paper, um, you can compare your answers with these answers and then see how you have fared. Thank you.